welcome to another Blender Vision tutorial. We're going to get a no-nonsense direct step-by-step -step approach to getting your tasks done. I'm Richard, you're you, and today we're looking at making trees. Nice trees, quickly and quickly. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna have a look at making trees today. Yes! Luckily, Blender has a built-in tree generator. Nice. I can't remember if it's on by default or if it's not. Go to your YouTube user preferences, uh, add-ons, and in the search box, type in sapling, and it'll come up saying add curve sapling. Make sure that box is checked. I just noticed they moved the box from the right over to the left. I didn't notice uh, till now. So anyway, make sure that is checked and you're good to go. Go back into 3D view and click Control New to save the startup file. So that saves you having to do that every time you start up Blender. So click on your spacebar if you've got dynamic spacebar menu enabled. Um, if you don't have that, which is also in the add-ons, if you go in the add-ons and type in dynamic spacebar you'll find that if not click shift a I think it is yeah and go to curve and go down to add tree and you can see some options popping up over here so let's make some room over here for this let's have a look um, at first it may look, look like nothing's come up on the screen but there's actually a tree there it's a little stick tree quite large at the moment don't try and scale it yet leave it as it is for now um, it's just sticks at the moment so what we're going to do is click bevel and I don't know why he's moving the camera around so get out a camera view so we can see this better so anyway bevel has made it better now you see thicker so it looks more like a solid object I'm not going to go through every setting on here because there's so many settings that you could just be here all day so I'm going to try and do this as quick as I can so just use the relevant settings now to make a tree nice and quick. So select bevel and we're going to go and have a look. Random seed here will change the look of it. It'll ra randomly pick a new shape for your tree. So you can go for uh, as many as you want. You can you can make a whole forest full and they will all be unique. Um, so there's a scale bar so we can scale it here. So let's bring it down a little bit there. And uh, looks okay. Let's go back to zero on the, the random seed. It's kind of a bit big now, so let's scale it back down. That's okay. That'll be it for that that screen there. So if we switch it to branch splitting, we've got levels, you've got two. What this means is the level one there is the main branch in the middle. So that's just one on its own. So if you have a level two, obviously there's branches coming off that and then level three there's branches coming off those so you're getting the one in the middle there you're getting the branches coming off which is two and then third one's going to be branches coming off of them so it's like a, th a three step thing and you can go up further than that but it gets quite taxing on your CPU there's a lot of settings here that you can go over but there's too many to go through so you can play around with them experiment so we're gonna have a look up here in leafs click show leaves and it puts leaves on our trees look at that it looks terrible so we're gonna bring that count down a little bit let's go down let's see let's go 10 no let's, let's try 5 that looks okay that'll do uh, hexagonal or rectangular rectangular is less vertices of course but hexagonal will look a bit better it's a bit more realistic Got the leaf scale there, you can bring it. Oops, that's a bit too much. Bring that down a little bit. Looks about looks about right. Uh, leaf scale there. I think it's like X and Y axis there, so let's bring that down a little bit. Leave it like that. So let's go on to armature. Now, I'm not going to bother with this, but I'll show you quickly what it does. If you want to animate your tree, like swaying, you can click use armature and it'll automatically generate an armature in the tree not only for the main branch but also the other little branches as well every little branch can be animated there so you can select them all and move them around 
uh, and a feature they got here is armature animation which if you select that what it does is automatically kind of keyframe some animations for you if you set the wind speed here and the weed gust it'll automatically sway the tree if i scroll across here you can see the tree is now swaying um, but it's really slow and laggy so you can see there if i click along it's a bit of a delay uh, but good if you want to have a windy day and you don't want to animate it by hand obviously that's, that's going to be a pain in the butt but um so you can adjust that there and it'll do it automatically for you but i can turn these off i'm gonna wait for the delay there you go so uh i think that's about it let's have a look pruning i'll quickly go over that if you prune your tree you get a line there got that shape which means you can adjust the shape and as you can see the top there is cut so if you want to do like um like a hedge like pruned cut hedge you can shape it to make it look good but so it makes it look it's been pruned and cut and taken care of by a nice homeowner but i'm gonna leave it there for now anyway just leave it looking natural so you can play around with them um and experiment for yourself because that is the best way to learn anyway so we're going to move on from that so what you left is here now is the main branch section and a leaf section as two separate objects the leaves as you see by the relationship line there is attached automatically parented to the, to the tree itself so you can move the tree around and the leaves will follow um, so let's quickly put some basic materials on these trees as you can see then when i clicked new material the settings over there disappeared i don't think you can get them back after that so that's why i make sure you get your tree looking the way you want it to look before you start messing around with materials although funny enough if you add material that is already existing it doesn't seem to disappear only if you click new material don't know why but there you go so let's get the leaves nice and green bring it down um trying to, sorry i'm trying to rush on trying to keep this as short as possible so because we can literally do a whole day on this so I'm going to leave a little bit of specularity on the leaves because they are kind of shiny. Uh, so leave it like that. Uh, leave it like that. <laughs> and then switch to the wood there and make it brown. Let's get rid of that specularity. Get a bit darker there. So it looks nice and brown. Lovely. So there you go. It looks quite nice as it is at the moment. It'll, let's, let's get this rendered. Let's have a little scan of this. Oh, it's dark. Uh oh, oh. Not very good light then. Let's see. Uh, change this into a point lamp, and there you go. And there you go. Look at that. It looks pretty good. Wow. Oh. Great for yeah. background trees, uh, even foreground trees, to be honest, because that looks pretty damn good. And it only took what about five minutes. Uh, less than that, really, when you know what you're doing. When you're going to talk. <laughs> so there you go. We can duplicate these now, and we will. Rotate on the x axis, x axis. Um, so you can easily duplicate and move them around there so they don't look too repetitive. If you rotate them and render that, and you get a nice little cluster of trees there, looks pretty good. Now, then, if I delete these, just get rid of all of these. If you want to do a forest scene, this is going to be quite taxing. Because as you can see, this small little tree here has got 22,000 vertices. Best part of 23,000 vertices. So I got trees, I've done trees that are like 300 or 1,000 vertices which per tree, which is obviously not very good if you want to do a whole forest scene. So I'm going to give you a little brief tip of what I did when I used when I did a forest scene. I'm going to show you the files of, of mine. Let's see if I can find this should have done this in advance got it already but i forgot let's have a look here okay this is the forest scene there as you can see there's a lot of trees in here um kind of so if i zoom out here and i go into solid view where's it gone there there you go you can see there's all it is is a bunch of planes showing the images of trees which I created myself. All the trees I did exactly the same as I just showed you in here. So I just basically 
I positioned the camera slightly looking up because um, I was making tall trees, so it gives it more of a tall kind of look to it. If you're looking up, I changed the resolution of the camera over here. Let's just zoom out. Kind of got it like that. I went into shading, may turn, put the transparent on, and do the render. Turn off the background there, so we can see like that. It looks pretty good. So you can save that by pressing F3 and then come in here, delete this, and just create another one. And keep doing it. I think I did about 20 different trees and then just brought all the images in as planes into this file and make it in a big circle because in the middle here is when the action takes place. So you, when you, whatever, whatever way you look, you can see trees. Uh, so I'll just give you a quick show of what it looks like in a render. Da, da, da. I should have set this up already. Okay, oh, I got it. Let's have a look. Here it goes. Like that's a screenshot of the animation I'm doing. You can see the trees are kind of a bit bold. They kind of stand out a little bit, bit quite green because they've been lit up by the UFO. You can see the character there being trying to film the UFO. But this is just a straight render, straight out of Blender. So once I've put it into Sony Movie Studio and done some color grading and put some light flares and whatnot, it looks like this. So as you can see, it looks much better. Now the trees kind of blend in with the background and the viewer's attention is drawn straight away to the UFO <coughs> and the character. So the trees kind of just disappear into the background and they don't take the focus then. So that looks a lot better as you can see there. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat's going. So I think that works quite well. So if you're doing a forest with a lot of trees, just take loads of pictures of individual trees that you can make and uh, just take them in as images, as planes, if you import them. I'll, if you've forgotten how to do it, I'll quickly show you here. So there's an object menu, add object, add mesh, images as planes. If you don't have that option, go and use your preferences. Go to add-ons and then type in planes, I think, and you should get it there. Import images as planes, tick the box, and you're good to go. So, with that said, I will leave it there now. So, have fun, experiment, and be creative. And I'll see you again. Ciao, blah.